Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and Radio. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are so happy to have you here on our show, Hot Topic. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and I'm so thrilled and pleased to be able to present our guest today. We were to meet in person in Philadelphia a week or two ago at a conference, and I got COVID, unfortunately, but she's here today to share some of her story. So I want to welcome without further ado, an incredible person, extremely accomplished. We're going to hear about what she went through to get to where she is today and how she is a role model and a leader for others, especially the youth that is out there. Her name is Dr. Genevieve, and she is a passionate and collaborative African business leader. We're going to find out what does leader actually mean? What does that term mean and how do we embrace it? She's dedicated to the development of individuals and the empowerment of women and youth. So let's find out more about the fact that she has been acknowledged as one of 100 most impactful change makers in Africa, and she has so many other awards and designations. Let's welcome Dr. Genevieve. Hello. Hi. Hi. Happy to finally meet you. <laughs> yes, it's an absolute pleasure. And when I think about, I've been standing here behind the green screen and you've actually flown into the States, flown back from the States, and here you are today. So where in the world are you, doctor? Currently, I'm yes. in the U.S. Oh, you are in the U.S. though. Okay, yes. fabulous. Where in the U.S. are you? I'm in Connecticut. Okay, fantastic. I'm down in Florida, so it's nice to to be the same country as you, but still far away at the I same know, point. Right? So thank you for taking the time to be with us today. And as mm -hmm. I mentioned, you've won a number of awards, extremely impressive. But you share with me backstage, it's been a journey. No one handed you these awards or designations. Tell us a little bit about your background and why you're here today. Thank you so much, Dr. Jacqueline. So um, I'm an African woman. I'm actually born to a royal family. My father is a king, and um, his name is Nana Amwakwa the Fifth. So that's his two name. We are from the Akan part of Ghana. And um, I'll say growing up, I, I had the opportunity to lead at a very early age because my mom used to travel a lot for greener pastures to come and help daddy take care of the family. I'm the second of five children. I'm the first girl. And I'll say I, I, I started leading right from, I'll say age 12, because like I said, my mom used to travel a lot. So that is how I grew up. And um, I grew up, I'll say humble beginnings. And for me, I always remember where I have come from as an African young lady, by God's grace, through education, and the fact that I have been blessed with great mentors and coaches around me, I have gotten to where I have gotten to today. And I think intentionality has been part of the journey. I have been very intentional about my life. I've been very focused and committed. And I also believe that God has been with me. I believe in God. I'm a Christian. So whatever you believe in, just have your belief system right. So I'll say that is how my journey has been. I went to school like an ordinary young lady from primary through secondary school. Somewhere along the line, I always say I'm a disappointed medical doctor because I really wanted to do pediatrics. 
but I didn't do so well in biology. So I had the opportunity to rewrite again. Whilst waiting to rewrite again, my mom was not in Ghana, but she advised me that I don't have to be idle. I should get something going. So I took a course under, um, um, it's a distance course, ICM where I did something with regards to front office management, customer service, and the hospitality industry. Out of that, I used one part to get a contract job at Ghana Commercial Bank. So I'll say that is how my banking career started. I got really interested in that. And then some way, somehow, I believe that when life throws at you lemons, you make lemonade out of it. So I think out of that, my journey tweaked to banking. And then I studied further. I did my first degree in business admin. And then gradually I progressed. I did my second degree in marketing. And then I did other courses. I don't like being idle. I'm always seeking knowledge. So I did quite a number of courses. And then finally, just two years ago, I did my doctorate at the Swiss Business School, Switzerland. But then I used the Ghana campus NIPS. So that is how my journey has been. And um, I'll say it's been very beautiful, yet challenging, but fulfilling because you need the challenges in your journey to be able to propel you for the future that you want. Absolutely. Well, congratulations, doctor, on everything that you've accomplished. It's it's quite impressive. And you were just talking about your education. And I was going to mention the fact that you have a master's and a doctorate. How important do you think it is today for people to pursue graduate level courses and education? I, I'm a lifelong learner like you with the doctorate, but I hear from younger people. It's just not that important. They just are interested in enjoying life and experiencing new things. What do you think is the message for today's youth about education? Education, I mean, we all, we all cannot overemphasize the fact that education gives you confidence. Education gets you where you have to be. You might be brilliant in doing your own entrepreneurial activities and all that, but with education, you can even take it to the next level. I always cite the example of people who are into hard skills. So people who braid our hair, people who do our makeup and all that. All these people can be gifted naturally. But anybody you see who has taken a further study in dressmaking knows that, okay, I need to embellish Dr. Genevieve's outfit with some of these things to make it look more gorgeous. I need to add some skill or some style to her hair to make it different from the ordinary. If I'm baking and I know how to bake naturally, I didn't learn it, I need to get something that would make me unique. So your unique selling proposition. So for me, you cannot rule out education. No matter what you've been blessed with from birth, your talent and all that, education gives you another level. It makes you stand out. And that is what it has done for me. Education has made me so confident today. I have the privilege to be interviewed by you because you've read about me. You've seen what I'm doing. You've seen what I have done over the years and you are attracted to come to me for an interview. I am called to speak locally and internationally because I have something to offer. It is all because of education. I, could, I couldn't have been here if I didn't have education. So for me, to the youth out there, never stop learning. I have not stopped learning. I am still learning. You, Dr. Jacqueline, you are still learning. And that is how we need to have the mindset recalibrated. That no matter what it takes, taking a course, a short-term course, two weeks, one month, three months, that's all part of education. Not really the formal education, but if you have the opportunity to go through formal education, postgraduate courses, please do it. Never stop learning. My dad at age 72 is still learning. My mom is still learning. I am still learning. So what excuse do you have? The youth out there never stop learning because it will take you far. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love what you just shared there. It's so important and relevant because not only are you highly educated, but you've taken that knowledge and you've 
embraced it and you are actually using what you've learned. So many times people get educated and they're just getting more and more education and degrees, but they're not actually out there exactly. doing anything with it. And so in addition to your success in banking and so many other areas, you've actually been able to take what you've learned and put it into publication as an acclaimed author. Can you tell us about the jigsaw effect of leaders? Okay. So Somewhere in 2019, I wanted to write a book on leadership because I felt my journey on leadership has been great. Yes, back from the banking industry, I felt a lot of young people think they can only achieve their level of leadership when they find themselves in some roles. But I had a different opinion. And so I felt, okay, one of the things I want to share is to let people understand that um, leadership has nothing to do with your position. I was a branch manager of the bank, but I didn't see that as my leadership journey because like I said, my leadership journey started right from when I was 12 years. There was a vision. I knew that my mom was not around. I needed to hold the mantle, stand in her stead and take care of my home, my father included, and my siblings that was leadership so i wanted to also let people know that look you can be working with a team you are the leader there are other leaders in your team but you need to identify their strength get them groomed get them ready for succession planning so the whole idea of the jigsaw effect of leaders is to tell you that look the jigsaw is a puzzle you know sometimes you are confused you don't know how to get it done but once you are able to put the right pieces together and you know that, okay, this person fits here. So support system here. This person will do better here. This is the strength of Genevieve. When I put Genevieve here, she'll deliver better than when I put her here. She can do well here, but she'll deliver better here. So I use the analogy of the football field where the coach is able to place people right. Know where you, you fit perfectly. So if you are in the midfield, you know your role. You can be a striker, but probably you do so well being a midfielder. So that is the kind of analogy I use. And also to share the insights that, look, no matter how young you are, you are a leader in your own right. In your home, in your school, in your church, in your society, in your community, find a problem that is happening around you. Get it solved. It makes you a leader. Pull others along. Let them understand the vision and get to get the impacts that you want to be you want to feel in your community felt and for me that is why i wrote the book the jigsaw effect of leaders i really like that title it's uh, i think it's very apropos and doctor something that you touched on earlier and then i mentioned in the intro is the word leader I remember when I was in corporate, I called on a company in Maryland. And when I went, I expected to see senior vice president, chair, the names outside the door. They had decided there were no names because everyone was a leader and that people were able to choose how they wanted to be addressed and put whatever they wanted on their business card. Do you believe that there is a leader in all of us? We just have to find it and bring it out? Perfectly. I believe that naturally some people are born with that innate abilities to lead others are not but what i would say is that it's a quad you can actually learn to be a leader it's not something that is not learnable you can actually follow the footsteps of great leaders get them to mentor you not physically you can read about people great leaders i have read a lot about people i have never met before Nelson Mandela, I never met, but I got to know about him. I have read about him. Kwame Nkrumah, I never met. I have read so much about him. I have read about world leaders. I have read about local leaders. So you cannot say that you cannot learn the skill of leadership. It's an intentional effort. So I believe that it's not so much to do with the title, but it's more to do with your mindset and knowing that this is where I want to see myself. I am prepared to be. The, the touch bearer and I'm prepared to move others along so that we can get the work done. Then you call yourself a leader and it makes it more meaningful. That's how I would put it. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. We were talking about women backstage and the fact we were 
I was supposed to meet at this conference and then I got sick, but you shared some really powerful takeaways about what happens when women come together, regardless of the title. And I know that you work with women to scale their businesses as well. What are some of the takeaways from the conference that you think can be applied to women who have businesses? Thank you very much. The first thing I'll say is that collaboration. I have overly emphasized this wherever I find myself speaking that women should replace the word competition with collaboration, cooperation. Let's, let's come together, pull efforts together and get the job done. So in my view, I think I am based in Ghana. You, Jacqueline, you are based here. Now we are friends, we've networked. We are now able to speak if I need something to be done here, no matter the industry, I am in a similar industry like you are. It is not competition. It's more about me coming together to have a synergy, strategic partnership, collaboration, to get the work done. Win-win situation. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we spoke heavily on mentorship. We cannot afford to say we are leaving a legacy behind if we are not ready to mentor others. And by mentorship, I'm not just talking about lip service mentorship, action-oriented mentorship. Sometimes you need to even take the step further and sponsor some young people who you think have what it takes to succeed you and other leaders. Another thing I will say was very, very critical is that we are in a digital world. The world is becoming highly or heavily dependent on digital. And here, AI is one aspect that no matter the skeptical mindset and how we are seeing it. It is a reality. So the more we get young ladies into the industry of technology, the better for us. And we don't want us to just be in the shallow leadership. We want to get to decision-making leadership because the diversity makes it beautiful. The diversity brings the different perspectives that will get it done and done well. And the world with diversity, as I am seeing it into the future, is going to be beautiful. So we should get more young women, more women to get to that leadership position. We should stop being laid back. We have what it takes. It's not a competition. I don't want us to have the mindset that we are competing with our men. Equality. Equality, yes. Equity, yes. But we should stop being at the back end. We should come forward. We should speak up. We should collaborate more. We should be ready to mentor the next woman. We should stop competing with ourselves. We should learn education. We should seek knowledge. We should be women who are willing to learn, no matter our backgrounds. We should forget about the excuses. Yes, we give birth. We get married. We take care of the home. We are multi-taxes, but it doesn't prevent us from pursuing to the pinnacle of our career. That is what I would say were the highlights for me from the, from the um, conference. And seeing the likes of her Excellency, Dr. Amina Fakim. I would say that, look, a woman who so many years ago became a president, the first female president of Mauritius, and many, many more other great women that I met. It tells us that it is doable. We can get it done. And we should stop the excuses as women. We should be more action-oriented. We should be more focused and committed to what our purposes are on this earth. And let's pull other women together and let's get the job done. Thank you. Thank you. So many gems that you just shared right there. And so I think one key takeaway is if you have the opportunity to attend a conference and empower other women, please do so. Please go to the events walk around, make connections, and how can you bring value to other women? How can you lend a hand to help lift someone up? Because someone's probably lending a hand to lift you up. And you also mentioned about technology and artificial intelligence. And I know it was April 14th, 2022, that you published a book. And that book really was a uh, I believe, a recounting of your experience in the banking business. And so the Diary of a Branch Manager is a comprehensive look at that collaboration, leadership, and technology. Can you speak a little bit about the crux of the book? Thank you so much. So the Diary of a Branch Manager was actually, like I said, about legacy. I believe that we seek knowledge to impact and also to impact. So I felt that, okay, I have done banking for the past 
13 years. One of the things I realized in the banking industry was that there was no manual to get you to succeed. <laughs> You're on your own, actually. So I felt some of the great things that have happened in my journey, the experiences along the way, what has worked for me, it was just good to leave a legacy. So that was the first motivator. The second thing was I felt that, okay, as a leader, um, these are true life experiences. It's not just a theoretical thing. It's a practical hands-on book that I felt I am giving out to the industry. And anyone who is new in branch management, you take up that book, you get to know about customer experience. You cannot win if you're not customer centric. You get to know about team collaboration and management. You cannot do it all by yourself. It's more like the jigsaw, putting the pieces together and getting the work done, finding the strength of your team, leveraging on their strength and getting the job done. Also celebrating your team, making them know that, look, we win together, I am the leader, but I cannot get there if you are not with me. So you place people right, you delegate more as a leader, you get to understand that when you delegate, it gives you also room to do more other things to develop yourself. And once you are developing yourself and you have the zeal to develop others, you are creating some level of succession plan. And then aside that, also the operational effectiveness. You cannot rule anything. You cannot get succeeded in anything if you are not operationally effective. So not just in the banking industry. The book is actually for everyone. So I spoke about operational effectiveness. And I also spoke about the fact that you need to have some guiding principles as a person if you want to actually achieve anything in life. And at the back of the book, I got insights from other industry players so that it gives you a holistic view of what it means to succeed as a leader, not just a branch manager, not just a banking staff, but in every aspect of your life or your career. For you to succeed, there are a few key things, critical things that you need to look at. And those are the things I spoke about in the book. Fantastic, doctor. And I loved how you can actually take what you've learned and parlay that into other areas and other businesses. And I know that you work also as a consultant, helping businesses find critical success factors. We, we actually have a comment from Tarragon Edge, which is where we're going right now. Tell us a little bit about this organization and your role there. Okay. So Tarragon Edge is actually um, a consortium. We work with different consultants. I'm the lead consultant for the Ghana and Tarragon Edge. We have Tarragon Edge events in the US, and then we also have Tarragon Edge training consultancy in the UK. So basically what we do is our focus is on two main areas. We are focused on SMEs, especially women-led businesses, to scale up, get them the right systems and structure to implement in their businesses to be able to scale up and then also become sustainable. So here we are looking at getting them ready for investor relations and all other things that comes with scaling up. Then also with the youth. The youth, because most times youth in tertiary institutions need some level of um, internship, need some level of experience prior to their finishing school. And unfortunately, in our part of the world now, we don't get that bit done. I think here in America and some other developed countries, youth get a lot of internship to do while they are in school. So one part of Tarragon focuses on the youth, especially tertiary institutions, where we get them to work while they are in school, align them with SMEs who cannot pay so much in recruiting the key talent. So whilst the students are in school and they need experience and SMEs also need people to look at their books and set their systems right, we match these people together and get them ready. So it's a win-win situation. We also have something we do for the youth called the Beyond the Certificate um, Podium or the, 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 the Summit, where we get to train these young people. We take them through, it's a one year long program. So we take them through internship programs. We take them through soft skills. We have a lot of webinar we do for them. We also do local and international events where they can take opportunity and be part of. The whole idea is to reorient their mind, get them ready for the world of work so that they don't have that shock when they finally finish school after four years, after three years, and then they find themselves in work. And then a lot of them have this lackadaisical attitude. 
they can't manage their time well they don't have interpersonal skills they don't know how to talk they don't know how to write well so these are all things we take our young people through proud to their finishing school so you can join the th students network and then you can have access to all these um, resources i just spoke about so basically that is what we do and then the other bit which has to do with the us where we do the events is more of conferences seminars private parties strategic collaboration with people who are looking for speakers for their programs and also giving them resources for africa and wherever they want to have events across um, the globe where we have connections with or we have strategic partners with so basically that's what we do thank you for sharing that that's very exciting i have a number of questions but first i'm wondering you are giving so much and you're doing so much we talk a lot about mental health wealth as an entrepreneur what is it that you do to take care of your self-care and to make sure that you are in a good place emotionally and spiritually thank you so much so before I answer this question, I'll tell you a story of um, the cobbler. Whenever I'm doing my trainings, especially with women, I use this story. The cobbler is the one who goes around fixing our shoes or our footwear. And the cobbler had a problem with his own footwear. That was the thumb bit of the foot. He didn't take care of it till one day he had to get the leg cut off because he did not manage his leg well. Now, everybody else, including myself, who depended on the cobbler to fix my shoe or my footwear for me, the cobbler was nowhere to be found. So relating the story to the question you asked me, I always say that you need to have an intentional way of taking care of yourself. Know what brings you alive. For me, I love water therapy a lot. I love to take time off everything, even in my own home, not just traveling. At home, my son, who is eight years, knows very well that there is a time when mommy is in this bathroom, I don't have to disturb her because I'm having my water therapy. The whole idea is that one should know what brings you back, what brings you alive, what makes you more rejuvenated. I have times that my, my stress levels, when it gets to my shoulders and then to my breast, I know that I'm highly stressed. So consciously, every two weeks, I have my massages because I think massage works perfectly for me. So for me, I have my me time where I am very intentional about whether it's in my home, whether it's at work, I don't want to be disturbed. And not being disturbed does not mean physical. It means mentally, it is my time. I remember somewhere last year, I, I went off public speaking and all that. When you invite me to speak, I tell you that I'm on break because I felt after my doctorate degree, I needed time for myself and my family. So I took that break. So for me, I'm very intentional about that. And I advise that everybody should knows what brings him or her alive. And take time to take care of yourself. Because like the cobbler, if you are not there, all the others that depend on you would also be in trouble. So take care of yourself first. Take care of your mental health. Take care of whatever matters to you. And then you can be there for all other people. It's not selfishness. It's self-care. It's self Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for sharing that story as well. It really brings things to light. I know a number of women like yourself, I, I don't have any children, but you're a mother, you're, you're doing so many things and women will say, no, I'm last. Everybody else is first because that's my role. And they feel this guilt in taking care of themselves. What would you say to them? Because obviously if they don't take care of themselves, they're not going to be able to take care of anyone else, but they can't change. The, they haven't changed their mindset as of yet. I would say that it's very critical for you to have a recalibration of your mindset when it comes to you, when it comes to your me time, when it comes to your self-care, because the truth of the matter is we cannot get, like we say, work-life balance. We cannot get the 100% balance. But I always say that you can integrate every part of your life. So I use my wheel of life a lot. At every phase, on yearly basis, I have a wheel of life I draw. And like I shared last year, I decided that after leaving the banking sector in 2021, my will of life is the focus. 50% is for my family. Then I can put the others in the 50. It is necessary for you to be very strategic, 
very intentional. That's the word I want to use. Very intentional about your personal health or about your self-care. Because the truth of the matter is that when you break down, you've worried your husband, if you have. You've worried your children, if you do have. You've worried your team members you're working with. You've worried community. You've worried society. You've worried the nation as a whole. And even the world as a whole. Because you don't know what you are yet to do for the world. So please, woman or man, take care of yourself. Break it off. Halt everything you are doing when you see that the stress is becoming too much. Because when you get down and you cannot bounce back, you cannot do all the things that you say are so much important to you. So that is my, my, my little bit to everyone out there that, look, take care of yourself. It's important. I second that. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at uh, your websites. But before we do, I would love if you can summarize for people who are watching or listening, whether it's the live or the replay, what are the services and the value that you and your organizations can offer to our audience? And they can say, you know what, after this program, I want to reach out to Dr. Genevieve. She can help me with. Okay. So Dr. Genevieve is actually a consultant and I help Small businesses, especially women-led businesses, not to say I don't help the men, but my focus is more on um, women-led businesses. I help them to scale up. So a lot of women who are out there and are into business, the point is that I want you to start right. So you put the right systems in place, then you can scale up, you can be ready for investor relations, and then you can also become sustainable. So that is the first thing I do as a consultant. I also help with corporate trainings. I train people in different aspects so leadership change management customer experience which is very passionate to me and then team dynamics so i do trainings as well i'm also a personal coach so i coach people in terms of clarity for you to understand what your purpose is on this earth where you are headed towards whether it's your personal life it's your business or whatever you find yourself and you want to get better at I believe that you have all it takes to outstand or to stand out in what you do. So I have been there. I share my real practical life experiences, the strategies I apply to get there and how you can be a better person. So that is what basically I do. Thank you, Dr. Genevieve. All right, let's take a look at your website. And this is actually uh, very easy for anyone to go ahead and and um, pull up themselves. It's GenevievePearl.com. That's G-E-N-E-V-I-E-V-E-P-E-A-R-L.com. All right, let's take a look now. All right, so here we are over on your website. Where shall we go here? All right. So would you like us to go to any specific place here? Oh, probably you can go to the homepage or you can go to, you can actually go anywhere you want. The services I have. So like I do the corporate trainings, I do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. So this is actually my personal website. Mm -hmm. And here is. Oh, the yes. So this is what we just did. Yes. This is the World Summit on Women and Girls, an initiative yeah. of Justina Mutali Foundation, Hands Across Philadelphia. Yeah, so I think sometimes they update my website with some of the things that I'm about to do or I do. And of course, here is your latest book, Diary of a Branch Manager. And so we've discussed two books. Do you have any additional books? Yes, yeah, so I have written two other books with... Um, other women across the globe. Um, the, the there is one that says, "Who moved my hills?" So I was a chapter um, contributor in "Who Moved My Hills," where it's more about entrepreneurship and what propelled us to go the entrepreneurial way. And so in that book, I spoke about the entrepreneurial wheel of life, where I spoke about the fact that yeah, challenges may hit you along the entrepreneurial path. I was challenged because I, at the point I was working in a bank, I had a restaurant and I had a gift shop. And the people I placed, the human resource, it's a critical thing that I looked at in that part, that you need to get the right people to delegate your jobs to. 
Because if you don't get the right people, what happens is that they might break off or they might let your, 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 your beautiful idea go down. However, you don't give up. You still pursue it if it's something that is really passionate and you want to pursue it. So the will of life is what I spoke about. But other women spoke about their entrepreneurial journey, what made them get to where they've got into the lessons, the experiences, the bad and ugly sides of entrepreneurship, and the fact that, look, it's not easy, but it is doable. It's a lonely road sometimes, and that's why we need collaborators. And then also there was a book um, I contributed in. Uh, I, my part was um, The Africa I Met, but the book was titled um, My Africa, My Identity. So it's also about women who have lived, women who hail from Africa but are in the diaspora and some of the lessons that we want everybody to be aware of. So I spoke on my chapter, I spoke about the Africa I met. The Africa I met is just a beautiful Africa where everybody loved each other. When a child is going wrong, I have the right to correct. I don't see that it's somebody's child. It's an all-inclusive thing. Values is one of the key things that I spoke about in that book, that we need to inculcate the right values, not just African values, but globally, the right values. What I have traveled and I have seen and I have learned, I need to bring it back home. What I feel is done back home that is good. I need to take it wherever I find myself in the world. So that is how I, I put my bit in the chapter, um, the Africa I met in the, in the book, the, my Africa, my identity. And then also there is um, a book on entrepreneurship where it's, it took quotes from different people across the globe. And I was also a contributor in that, in that book, in, in an entrepreneurial book. It's actually on my website, yeah. So basically I do bits and pieces of um, things, helping others to get their work done and being a good collaborator. It all comes back to what we discussed in the beginning about collaboration and cooperation and being there to support one another. A question I have for you uh, as we're coming to the close, because I think this is really important. You've already authored your own books and you've been a collaborator in other people's books. Why did you decide, even though the order might be different, but why did you decide to collaborate in addition to having your own content, because that's, I think that's actually beautiful because you're not taking the stance, oh, I can do the whole thing by myself. You're saying, yes, I can write my own books and I can also help you with your books. Yeah, so like I said, um, knowledge is diverse. I have a part that I can play in getting the whole beautiful piece done. So for instance, like the books I collaborated in, just giving you my part of it, it was just my story. I don't think it would have that feel that I see the book have because these are women across the globe, 18 different women, different experiences, different standards, different principles coming together to share their experience. For me, I think collaboration just makes it beautiful. That's all I want to say. Collaboration brings the beauty of everything. I can do it all by myself, yes. But when I collaborate with Jacqueline, when I collaborate with Dr. Monica, when I collaborate with Dr. Abby, when I collaborate with other people and we all bring our views and we put it together, there is nothing like that. And that is why I would say that, yes, you can go ahead and do your own things. But when you have the opportunity, when you are called upon to contribute, don't shy away. I love how you said that. That was beautiful. Let's take a look at your other website before we say goodbye for today. And this website is tarragonedge.com. That's T-A-R-R-A-G-O-N-E-D-G-E.com. Dr. Genevieve, what can people take away from going to this website? Okay, when you go to this website, we have an ecosystem for SMEs. So you can sign on on that ecosystem and you have access to so much that we offer in terms of helping you scale up and helping you become investable. Then also for the young people or the students, we have the student network where you can also sign up and become a part of the TH student network where we get to groom students and make them ready for the world of work. Okay. And here's some more information 
about you and the things that you've accomplished, which again are truly outstanding. And and I just thank you so much for coming here and sharing part of your story with us today. What would you like to leave our audience with? Anything I haven't asked you or something that you wanted to bring up? Okay. Um, just a few takeouts. What I will say is that for women, because I stand for SDG Go 5 and also SDG Go 17. So I speak more about women and partnership. So the first one I would say for our women out there is that we have so much in us. Let's take the mantle of leadership. Let's lead. I belong to the WISE Network. I'm the president of the WISE Net, Women Intelligentia for Service and Excellence. And it's all about leading and service. We should serve and serve well. We should be sure and conscious of our environment. We should be impact-oriented. That is the first thing I want to say. Women should take up leadership roles. Let's not shun away from leadership rules. Let's not give excuses that we are mothers, we have children. We, we have to do all these things by prioritization. So let's prioritize and also get to the top of our careers. Whatever you want to do, do it and do it to the best of your ability. That is the first one. The second point I have overly emphasized on, and I'll say that again, collaboration. Collaborate. It should not be all about you. You have what it takes, I have what it takes. But when we come together and we do it together, it makes it beautiful. Just make sure that you find people who share in your values and your principles so that you can come together strategically and get the job done. And then the third thing I would say is that the youth out there, be very intentional about your personal development. Be very intentional about your future. Be more futuristic. Delay the gratification today. Don't be too focused on what is happening. There's so much happening on social media and you can be carried away if you don't take it. But stay focused and remember that there is something we call digital footprint. So leave the right digital footprint because you cannot unmake some of the mistakes that you make today. Be intentional about whatever you're doing. And then the final bit is that whatever you believe in, I believe in God, I'm a Christian. Whatever you believe in, hold it family because that is the god factor or the spiritual factor that will take you to wherever your destination is as a human being and what you've been proposed to do on this earth thank you thank you that was absolutely beautiful and again please do reach out to dr genevieve your websites are a great way for people to contact you is there some other additional information you'd like to share about how people can reach out exactly i'm more active on linkedin I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm more active on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn, I'm Genevieve Pell Duncan Obobi. So you can contact me on LinkedIn and we can start a conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Genevieve. It's an absolute pleasure and honor to meet you. And I look forward to collaborating with you on something in the Perfectly. future. Perfectly. And I love your title, The Listening the listening the, mentor. Yes, but I love the listening because it is not everybody who has the skill to listen. And thank you very much for the opportunity to share my insights and my thoughts. This is a simple example of collaboration. You, 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 you felt you needed me and I made myself available. And together we've made it right and others will learn from it. Thank you very much. And keep up the great work, Dr. Jacqueline. Thank you, Dr. Genevieve. The same to you. And we'll be in touch. Hopefully you'll come back and see us on one of our other programs as well. And we'll continue the conversation. Definitely. I will be more than happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you, everyone who is watching or listening on the live or the replay. Please do reach out to Dr. Genevieve. She's here sharing information, sharing wisdom. Please do purchase her books. You can go over to Amazon. You can find her on LinkedIn. If you've missed any of this information, you can watch the show again. You can reach out to me. And before we go, I'm excited. We have a new sponsorship that was just put together. So let's take a look at this, and then we'll be coming back with our next show, we which is Food and Our Emotions, starring Mr. Red O'Laughlin. He's going to be talking to us about uh, another uh, analyzation of diets and food that we eat and how it impacts us. So please stay tuned for that as well.
USA Global TV and Radio, in partnership with Dr. Jacqueline LLC, present Amazon number one best selling author, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck is a certified life career and executive coach who teaches people how to listen at an elevated level through her courses and her books. Dr. Kerbeck teaches her clients how to open their hearts and express themselves through their creative genius. In her children's book series, The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor, Dr. Kerbeck teaches children and their families how to listen at an elevated level. Dr. Kerbeck has worked with clients across the world to guide them in how to express themselves and communicate at a highly effective level. Join our team of elevated listeners so you can listen without judgment, without providing a solution, without interruption, and without stealing the stage. To order your books today, go to drjacqueline.com or Amazon. This program has been brought to you in part by Zane Carson Carruth, etiquette and protocol expert, international award-winning author, television show host, and philanthropist. Thank you to Zane, our official diamond sponsor for USA Global TV and Radio in partnership with E360 TV. Zane is the author of the world's first tooth fairy ever, as well as many other children's books. She's also the television host of Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living, seen on USA Global TV and Radio. Hi, my name is Zane Carson Carruth, and I'm the author of this book, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Reading is magic. Studies have shown that reading to your children lays the foundation for greater success in life. Reading helps develop language and vocabulary skills. It helps improve memory and it encourages curiosity and inspires creativity. The benefits are immeasurable and as a parent, you'll benefit too. In only 10 or 15 minutes a day, you'll be creating more memories and a bonding experience that will last for years to come. So take time to read to your children. Read them books about things that engage and interest them. Tales of fairies and magic fascinate children, and as everyone knows, the Tooth Fairy is at the top of the list. If your child loves magic, wands, adventure, and what child doesn't, you'll love reading them books from the trademark series, The World's First Tooth Fairy Ever. Follow along as Abella, the world's first tooth fairy, accidentally starts the tooth fairy tradition. Learn the tricks of being a professional tooth fairy in the book, Abella Starts a Tooth Fairy School. Your child's imagination will soar as you read the adventures of Abella and her magic wand. These wonderful books are available at worldsfirsttoothfairy.com and at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Walmart. To learn more about Zane, contact her through her website, zanecaruth.com. Z-A-N-E-C-A-R-R-U-T-H dot C-O-M. Order Zane's books and merchandise. Contact her about being a keynote speaker at your next event.